out of the balcony and into the luxuriously appointed All-American <laughs> Den. Yes, it's the third annual edition of Cisco Niebert's Holiday Video Gift Guide, an hour-long special where we preview and test drive some of the hardware and the software that might make good gifts this holiday season. And this year, the most popular electronic video gift under the Christmas tree will probably be the same as last year's favorite, the Nintendo Video Game System. This year, Nintendo is reaching out to an adult market with new products for home finances, but Gene and I are still catching up with the basic Nintendo system. The popularity of Nintendo systems has made its business so big that toy and department stores apparently aren't big enough to handle the demand. A new franchise system called Captron World of Nintendo is breaking out in shopping malls across the country. And at one of those Nintendo outposts, Gene and I met young experts who were willing to teach us the games, or at least to try. Of course, I'll do anything to win as we prepare to play Tecmo Bowl, a full-fledged football contest. So when it goes full like that, you hit A to kick. Right. Now, now. Yeah, that's great a great kick. kick. That's a great kick. Pretty good kick. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Almost to the end zone. Now what do I do? Let's take a timeout for some consumer information. Nintendo home systems run from $79 to $149, and game cartridges from $25 to $40. The company has also introduced the Game Boy, a handheld Nintendo system that costs 90 bucks, with each game cartridge going for $20. And now back to our lesson. Does number one have the ball? Yeah. Oh no, it's a pass play. Oh no. Oh no. No. How can I stop him? Touchdown. I never thought this was going to be a touchdown. touchdown. He had to cover. And another time out on the field to discuss the controversy over kids who spend too much time with video games. How much do you play a day? Oh, about I an play hour. about an hour, two hours a day. I play a long time. Now, what about parents who say, I got a Nintendo uh, system for my kid, and now he, I can't get him away from the television set? Good, that's what we want to hear. Uh, things like that, we, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, a, it's a good uh, tool to keep the, the child occupied, and there's absolutely no harm in it. Do you know what a lot of parents are worried about well, when reading. they see you playing all this? Reading. reading. They think... Because you might, this kind of stuff makes your brain go away. Like... Finally, the showdown. Roger Ebert faces Gene Siskel on the field of Tecmo Bowl. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I couldn't see <laughs> you it. You got five yards at second and five. But did you know? <laughs> no, I didn't know what was happening. I don't know what I did. See, I like him saying hut, hut, hut. I like the fact that I can make a football player. I'm, gonna, I'm concentrating. I don't care what strategies you use to distract me. I think, oh, that's nice. Four, you lost four yards. You lost four yards. That you have the ball, Ignat. Smeared. Okay, fourth down and 20. Very good. Hot, 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 hot. I think I'm going to punt. Now, if you want to, okay, you're going to punt, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Go, oh, what a kick. Look at the ball keep going. Interception. Love it. You intercepted on the 10-yard line. Yeah, now I got four downs to get 10 yards. Okay. Eight-yard line. Okay, All right, fabulous. Touchdown. Now, I'm willing to concede that you beat me. Oh, what do you mean, concede? <laughs> you, I, I beat what you. What I will not concede is that you knew what you were doing when I you beat me. I knew exactly what I was doing, and I kicked the extra point and made it 7 Not at all. You were pushing what do you mean, not at all? I kicked at random. The, I kicked the extra point, 7 you nothing. you lost. You understand how to play that exactly. game. Exactly. And you know you what? what these I understand, meant. and I understand it so well, I'll never play again, because I really don't find that kind of video game at all interesting. Do you find it interesting? You know, I was going to say, I got one of these sets at home and I started playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with right. it. And after a while, after about a week of this, I would find that every time I had a spare moment or every time I came home, I was in front of the set playing with these mutant turtles and it got to the point where it was making me quite unhappy because I was so obsessed with it. And I finally unplugged the machine and I said, that's it for Nintendo because it seems to me that it's so hypnotic and so repetitive that it was just not good for my mental health. Well, the other thing that I think is once you know how to do it well, mm -hmm. What have you got? Well, actually, and I never did find out how to do it well, either. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? In other words, so you have a little bit of hand-eye coordination. I mean, th that's it. I mean, big Applied, deal. I mean, yeah. big deal. And I, it was a little frightening to hear the kids saying that they play two hours a night or one hour mm -hmm. a night. That's a... 
hell of a lot of time. Okay, our next video gift item up for review is the Canon ZapShot system. It's the still video camera that I have right here in my hand. It looks nice. It takes still snapshots that you can play on your television set immediately, no waiting for the developing. To see how it works, we took the camera to Chicago's wonderful Lincoln Park Zoo. First stop, the Great Ape House. You're looking at nine-month-old Bolera, a gorilla. And the name is Swahili for a place in Africa. This is Pat Sass, the yes. trainer. And uh, this is like being right in the middle of 2001, the opening scene. This is spectacular. Um, the hands are great. Come on, baby doll. Fabulous. Fabulous. Not an impressive photograph. Mm -hmm. It's spectacular to put the hand, just to feel the hand. The gorilla is beautiful, but we should fill you in on the Canon Zap Shot. List price is $700, and on each of its little discs, 50 still images can be held. It also has two lens settings, one for normal distance shots and one for extreme close-ups. The close-up is a little better when taken from less than three feet, and at that range, the gorilla got interested in the camera. Push down right there, push down right there. So easy yeah. to use, a nine-month-old gorilla. <laughs> yeah. And some of the gorillas behind the glass wanted in on the fun, too. Good God, there comes King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go visit some nice, tame elephants. Come on, guys, stand still. Maybe we should get a larger animal for you. This one is too small. I you. always like low angle. That's a little dark, as you can see. And we did use the flash. So here you are. Oh, there he is. Wait, let me, hey, give me another shot there. Oh, look at that. What Roger didn't realize is that you'd have to turn your TV on its side to see this picture the right way. Why don't we take some pictures of the giraffes while we're here anyway? Always a good idea. It's very difficult to get the entire giraffe in the shot, unless I shoot at the baby right back there. That's Baby but Noel. But that's so far back, the lighting will probably be no good. Well, let's check it out. Baby's name is Noel. It was born on Christmas Day. It's going to be one year old this Christmas. You try one. I will. Let's see, I want to get this guy. Now, see? Get the whole face. And kind of angle it, and then you can see the whole neck and everything. That'll be a great shot. Roger was very interested in these tilted shots. I got Noel. I don't think it flashed when you got Noel. It flashed the second time. I get closer to it. Don't fall in. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you could see, we're not the greatest cameramen. We didn't really make such great pictures. And I don't think this camera has much use for people at home. They can always freeze frame moving video. But I can imagine some business uses for the camera, using it as sort of a high-powered fax machine. In other words, like that thing we had on a previous show where you send pictures, still photographs, over the telephone from one end to the other. Right. That would be useful. I think at $700 it's too expensive, but I believe that if they bring the price down to the $300, $400 range, it will be fun for people because it's like a Polaroid camera, uh, except you can shoot faster. You don't have to keep waiting for the Polaroid camera to do its thing. And the picture quality is at least as high as Polaroid film, which has never impressed me that much. Uh, so that I enjoy the fact that I could maybe have a birthday party and immediately look at the pictures, or if I'm a real estate person, or if I'm a continuity person on a movie, and I need to take a lot of pictures in a big hurry and have instant access to them, yes. then it's a useful tool. Well, uh, useful tool. But the, the birthday party example, uh, kids would rather see moving video, you know that. And second, I, I think you make the point that mm -hmm. I was talking about business uses, yes. Home personal use, I'm not so sure. Even at a, well, a ridiculous price, that would be great. Yeah, because at, at $700, you can get an awfully nice 35-millimeter camera. Coming up next, overlook fine films that would make good video gifts and a report on the future of television and your home video system. I would like to receive um, Marcel Karn's masterpiece, Children of Paradise. It's, without a doubt, my favorite film, and I love every second of its 188 minutes. Continuing the 1989 edition of Siskel and Ebert's Holiday Video Gift Guide, with the lowering of prices of movies on cassettes and discs, we'd each like to give you some suggestions of terrific films that were overlooked at the box office and that you might not have thought of as giving as holiday gifts. One of my favorite films this year was the reggae murder mystery, The Mighty Quinn, with Denzel Washington in a winning performance as a small-town Jamaican police chief charged with bringing his best friend to justice after he's accused of murder. There's a man out there looking for you who wants you dead. Then I'm glad you got here first. That's Robert Townsend as the renegade Malby. As good as The Mighty Quinn is as a thriller, it's also a buoyant depiction of island life, as well as a terrific musical that one can watch repeatedly. I've seen it twice in theaters. I'd love to own the tape for Laserdisc. 
An even more overlooked film was the political family drama Running on Empty from last year. River Phoenix played a young man whose family life is in constant upheaval because his parents are 60s radicals on the run. FBI officials in Miami said that despite the presence of their two children, the Pope should be considered as possibly armed and dangerous. The politics of the film are less interesting than the dynamics of a quite real family in distress. High drama here at a most intimate level. You know, the real sleeper there is the mighty Quinn. I can remember when that movie came out, you and I were both so enthusiastic yes. about it, and I, we both still are. It's going to be on my list of the ten best movies of the year. Me too. It did not get the kind of exposure I would have expected. I'm glad it's on video. Well, I'll tell you, I really do mean it when I recommend it for purchase, because with the musical track on it, you can really enjoy mm -hmm. seeing it over and over. It won't be wasted money. That's right. Here are my choices for good movies that are out on video and that you might have missed at the box office. Madame Zasatska contains one of the best performances of Shirley MacLaine's career as an aging and stubborn London piano teacher who ferociously protects her high standards. One of her students has the potential to become a brilliant concert pianist, but Madam doesn't think he should be rushed onto the stage prematurely. You teach him how to play, I how to make a living. Making a living, as you put it, Mr. Bloom, is not what music is all about. And I have a rule that none of my students will appear in public before he or she is ready. Things Change, the second film written and directed by playwright David Mamet, starred Donna Michi in a priceless performance as an old Chicago shoeshine man who's taken to Nevada and mistaken for a powerful mafia boss. Joe Mantegna co-stars as the low-level mobster who hopes they can both survive the misunderstanding and get out alive. And whatever services you should desire, there is, of course, no bill. Your money's no good in this hotel. And that is a great Don Amici performance. You know, when you talk about giving discs and tapes as gifts, one of the things that's happened that's encouraging just in the last year or so is that some of the major studios have started pricing their tapes much lower, not only at $14.95, which a lot of Paramount hits are at, but some studios are even coming in now with $9.95 budget price tapes, and that's terrific for people who like to own them. You know, the lowering of price also applies to discs. For example, we were talking about Running on Empty. That came out at $89.95 on tape, but $24.98 on disc. Mm -hmm. And so you really ought to check out discs as a real option, in addition for their great quality, for their low price. Right. Our next category includes a lot of the traditional bestsellers at Christmas time, comedy tapes. You'd think that people would get tired of hearing and seeing the same jokes over and over again, but I guess they don't. And looking over a bunch of tapes for this show, there was just one I could see again and again, and it's from the most successful comedy star to come out of Saturday Night Live, Eddie Murphy. His new tape, The Best of Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live, delivers exactly what it promises. And here Eddie Murphy takes on the legendary James Brown in Hot Tub. He's terrific, and my favorite comedy pick also comes from Saturday Night Live. The best of Gilda Radner, featuring the late comic actress, so sweet and winning as herself, in an opening bit from Saturday Night Live. Hi, I'm Gilda Radner, and, uh, <laughs> okay, now. And here she is as the vulgar commentator, Roseanne Rosanna Dana. She talks about seeing a black hair sticking out of Bo Derek's nose after she saw Bo sneeze while shopping at Tiffany's in New York. Just stop out there, and it was long, and it was black, and it was perfect. That's very funny stuff, and it's also tinged with nostalgia for someone who died at such a young age. She was really funny. Coming up next, we've been talking about video laser discs, and you may even be feeling slightly guilty that you don't quite know what they are. Well, when we come back, we'll explain why laser discs are the best next generation technology for serious home video fans. The movie I would like for Christmas on home video would be White of the Eye, uh, the best movie I saw last year uh, with David Keith and Kathy Raging Bull Moriarty, a terrific movie that bears repeated viewing. Now, back to Siskel and Ebert's Holiday Video Gift Guide. On this segment, we want to talk about how to arrive at the best possible picture on your home television set, and let's start out with a basic definition of terms. This, you've seen it before, is a VHS video cassette. Thanks, Raj. Which has become the international standard for home video viewing. And this is a laser disc, which represents the next generation for home video fans. You can think of a laser disc as sort of a great big compact disc 
that plays pictures as well as sound. The difference between this and this is that a laser disc delivers a much better video picture, 60% better, and sound that can be as good or better as many movie theaters. But still better television pictures lurk just beyond the horizon. Television, it may come in many sizes, but one thing remains the same. We still watch television on a system invented 50 years ago, but that's about to change. A revolution is underway in how our television pictures are created. Every image we see on a TV screen is made up of lines of electronic information. If you could see it up close, you notice lines of black in between the colors. With a new system called Improved Definition Television, or IDTV, which is now on sale, those lines of black are filled in with picture information to make the picture sharper and more realistic. An even bigger change will take place in five to 10 years with the advent of high definition television. High def will be a completely new system for broadcasting television pictures. It will mean screens change their shape to become more like a movie theater screen and they will contain twice or three times as much information. Their images might look like this. These are some of the first pictures shot for a new television system being worked on by an American research team led by RCA and the David Sarnoff Research Labs. If you had the widescreen television of the future, this incredibly sharp video would fill the screen. HDTV is something that is going to be uh, with us probably in three to five years, primarily for in-home use. While we're waiting for high-def TV, there are already good ways to improve the pictures you see on your screens at home. The best way is laser vision, playing laser discs on your television instead of VHS tapes. And Bob Griesbaum is a Chicago businessman who's one of laser's biggest boosters. Today you have uh, incredibly good equipment, incredibly good discs, capable of giving you a very good picture on your home entertainment system, uh, extremely realistic sound for sound effects, extremely realistic music. Take a look at the new laser and VHS releases of Rain Man. They're running side by side here, and you can see the laser picture is sharper, the colors are more solid than those on the videotape. Yes! Yes, sir. You gotta love this town. Another feature on many laser discs and some videotapes is called letterboxing. We've talked a lot about letterboxing on the show, the process by which the widescreen movie is put in the middle of a TV screen, and there's a black band at the top and down at the bottom. Well, some people don't like that because they want their entire screen to be covered with a video image. But as you can see with a larger thing, the trade-off is you see the entire width of the original movie, like Ghostbusters here, the way the director originally made it. Wow, this place is great. In this scene, we keep losing one of the Ghostbusters when it's not letterboxed. I'm gonna get my stuff. And this scene loses a lot of the impact of its widescreen special effects when it's not letterboxed. <laughs> When you combine a laser disc player with the newest in five speaker surround sound systems, you really bring the movies home. Dolby ProLogic surround sound system was something that was previously only available to theaters. It's now available for the average person to develop a system so that he can have five speakers, and one of the five speakers can be positioned near the center of the front of the room either over his TV or under his TV or actually use the TV speaker in some cases mm -hmm. so that it uh, approximates the speaker that would be behind the screen in a theater for the dialogue. And Bob is right when he's talking about sound. I happen to be an opera fan and I love opera on Laserdisc and the sound is so much better than it is on videotape where it really gets muddy and fuzzy sometimes. I think a lot of people are wary of Laserdisc because they think it's just going to be a momentary fad and then that HDTV mm -hmm. is around the corner. I think HDTV is, best guess, at least seven to ten years Way away from being, from being in the home. Mm -hmm. I think you will not be wasting your money to invest $600 in a Laserdisc player because the quality is so much better that every time we mention a cassette on this show mm -hmm. or on our regular show, I feel like people are getting cheated in a way because they're not buying a laser disc and so they're not getting the sound. If you want to get the Mighty Quinn, hear the reggae music as it was really played on laser disc. It's that important. One thing that's been encouraging since we did this show last year is that laser disc sales are up 140% in the last year, so it is catching on in the marketplace, especially with the introduction of these 
lower price players, and of course the big price breaks on the discs. Okay, now we're going to pick some of our favorite laser discs to recommend that you buy. And my favorite laser disc of the year is not a movie, but rather a most special record of film and photographs taken on the Apollo space missions to the moon some 20 years ago. The disc is called For All Mankind, and the liftoff, as represented on disc, is stunningly clear. The astronauts were equipped with 16 millimeter cameras, and their home movies from the moon's surface have never looked better than on Laserdisc. This material is only available on Laserdisc, not on tape. And if you have a favorite movie you're used to seeing on VHS tape, such as Some Like It Hot, it will look much better on the new disc version. Here Jack Lemmon is trying to catch Tony Curtis, who has pretended to be a millionaire in his effort to make it with Marilyn Monroe. The most wonderful thing happened. What? Yes. They repealed prohibition. Oh, come now. You can do better than that. I met one of them. One of whom? Shallow L. Jr. And laser discs such as this one from the Criterion Collection often contain extra material about the movie, such as these silent home movie scenes of Marilyn Monroe on the beach looking uncomfortable with her husband, Arthur Miller, during the shooting of Some Like It Hot. You're simply seeing the picture better on Laserdisc, and that's important, and it's great in a black and white film like Some Like It Hot. When I have people over at my house and I show them Laserdisc, uh -huh. I put on a black and white film. I put on usually A Hard Day's Night with the Beatles, and in black and white, it is so stunningly well, what clear. It gives you, what Laserdisc gives you is a perfect, or not a perfect, but a very good black rather than the kind of gray that you get and from that's the thing that tape. sells it to my friends. I think you're right. Okay, now for my selection to the best new video disc this holiday season. I'm a fan of Japanese movies, and I often find that the Japanese movies on tape have lousy, scratchy pictures and unreadable subtitles. That's why I love this new version of Floating Weeds, the 1959 classic by Yasujiro Ozu, sometimes called the most Japanese of all directors. It tells the story of a traveling troupe of actors who visit a provincial town where the leading actor is left behind a mistress and a son. Look at the brilliant Technicolor here and the readable subtitles. My next holiday selection is the 50th anniversary Laserdisc version of Gone with the Wind. This is a movie almost everyone has seen, but unless you saw it 40 years ago, you haven't seen it in a print that looked this good. Turner Entertainment has done a frame-by-frame -frame restoration of the original film so that Scarlett and Rhett look as fresh as the day when Vivian Lee and Clark Gable first played them. You turn me out while you chase Ashley Wilkes, while you dream of Ashley Wilkes. This is one night you're not turning me out. And the quality of that new version of Gone with the Wind is really terrific, but of course there is a controversy involving directors like Martin Scorsese who say that when the movie first came out, the colors were brighter and more saturated than they appear on this Turner Broadcasting re-release on Laserdisc. My suggestion, you can sit at home and play with the color adjustment on your set and heat it up a little bit to make it look more like three-strip Technicolor if that's what you want to do. You can see the comfort level that you find. For no it. matter what level you play, color level you play this disc at, you are going to see a better quality going with the wind it's true. than you've seen before at home. That's, right. that's the special quality of laser discs. Coming up next, a tour of a spectacular home video system, some advice on how to improve your own home system, plus video gifts for the kids. The home video that I'd like to receive for the holidays is My Man Godfrey. Uh, mostly because I'm, I'm a real big Carol Lombard fan. Continuing our holiday video gift guide, we're going to take a look at one family among very many who are trying to recreate the movie-going experience in their own home, now that the movies themselves are so easily available. A satellite dish hidden in the trees and wild grass is the first hint that you get that this household is very serious about television. The signals that land in this dish feed a variety of TV outlets inside. Outside the master bedroom is the television viewing area with a 35-inch screen and two extra monitors so you can see all the networks at once. But that isn't all that's here. Downstairs is where they see movies, and what a way to see movies. And this is one serious home video theater. An elegant leather couch runs along the wall facing a large screen projection TV. A glass block wall, backlit by neon, frames the television. And that wall isn't simply an artistic statement. It hides the furnace and water heater and octopus of pipes in the basement. 
One of the designers who developed this unique room is Greg Mayer. Audio-visual components aren't particularly attractive. How did you hide all the equipment? You see there are a number of loose tables around. The largest of them contains the projector for the TV and is also a place they can serve food and drinks and so forth. And then off to one side here behind the mirror wall is a uh, storage closet with all the components and storage for all the media, the tapes, the discs and so forth. Inside that little closet is a lineup of high-tech audio and video gear from stereo equipment to video tape players, amplifiers, and a home theater surround sound system. You don't even notice the speakers because some of them blend into the walls and others are hidden above a grid of red metal beams that crisscross the ceiling. The technical side of the setup was supplied by Norman Field of Columbia Audio Video in suburban Chicago. He told us that people make one mistake most frequently. Their perception is, okay, I see this big screen, therefore what I see must be it. And a lot of times they fail to realize that the sound is at least half of the entire effect. Because of the revolution in movie theater sound, people who haven't bought an audio system in 20 years are suddenly investing in audio equipment. Have you ever seen a home entertainment center as good as a good movie theater? Oh, sure. Particularly in the area of sound. Now, the picture, there's some problems. Even our best pictures today, laser disc or whatever, can't give you the clarity, can't give you the sharpness that you've got on a good piece of film. Good sound is so important to the quality of movie watching that Field believes you should eagerly pay for it. Let's say somebody had $10,000 to spend. Mm -hmm. How much percentage should be spent on sound? Oh, as much as you possibly can. Ideally, you would spend, what, half on sound, if you could? Maybe, depending on the size of the room. A bigger room is going to require more speakers to cover the room, and it's going to require larger amplifiers to cover the room. Uh, and also, a lot of times, the decoration is important. I think his advice on sound is sound. It's like the old stereo music problem of not spending enough money on your speakers. However, there is one thing missing from that home system that we visited, a Laserdisc machine. The owner spent, I'm told, somewhere between ten dollars and $15,000 on hardware, and for another 600 bucks, they could really dramatically increase their big screen image if they had bought a laser disc player. And I left the name of where to get one. Oh, you left. Uh, you that's good, because anyone who has a big screen TV and doesn't have laser disc is just losing. Uh, the bigger the screen, the more you need laser disc. Those people right. really need laser disc. Badly. So, uh, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking by it. If video rooms like that one represent the brave new world of home entertainment, there are some tapes available this holiday season that point in the opposite direction, back toward nostalgia for the golden age of television. A lot of old shows are turning up on home video now, and of the selection, my favorite is a set of three brand new tapes featuring highlights from TV's first superstar, Milton Berle. Do you know what he actually did? I can't imagine. He put on a dress. <laughs> With these Milton Berle tapes called The Second Time Around, we are actually looking at old kinescopes, and if you've seen recreations of old television shows before, they never look this good. This looks a lot better than those kinescopes we've seen before, and there's a reason for that. For the 50th anniversary of commercial television, Kodak has introduced a process that cleans up and improves the visual quality of kinescopes so that Uncle Milty has really never looked better since the show first went out on live television. And they can apply this process to other early TV if they want to. I wish that had been done to some of the tapes I looked at. Still, I love looking at vintage TV as sort of a cultural document. For example, look at the 1952 series See It Now shows with Edward R. Murrow here interviewing a Chinese-American chased from his house in San Francisco by bigots. That, he threatened me. He said, well, of course, after you move in, some irresponsible people like youngsters, they might throw rocks or dump garbage at your lawn. Uh, I asked him, how, well, how would the kids know which house to pick and throw the rocks at unless they're uh, taught by their parents to do so? And that show was sort of a precursor to 60 Minutes. When I was a little boy in 1951, I was a big fan of the heartache shows like Strike It Rich with Warren Hull interviewing down-and-out contestants who told one disastrous tale after another. Uh, Joe was in the Navy when we got married. Oh. And uh, when I had to go back into the hospital again, he got out on a dependency discharge oh, to make sure to... that the baby was... Uh, taken care of. I think that show could be brought back along with Queen for a Day. You know, the fascinating thing about programs like Strike It Rich and also about the Milton Berle stuff is that it was live. 
Mm -hmm. You are looking right now at something that really happened live on television. Yeah, and what if they made a mistake? Yeah. Big deal. Well, the, in the Burl stuff, you can see lots of times when they make mistakes or when they, they're obviously almost cracking up because they're not saying what they thought. Andy, Andy Warhol said that say. the outtakes would be more interesting than the programming left in. I, I think he's right. From the past back to the future, later we'll be showing you one of the wildest new home entertainment systems, the karaoke system. But next, our choices for children's and music video gifts. But I guess it would have to be Paths of Glory because there was something about it that I did I, and I haven't seen it in a long time. Welcome back to Siskel and Ebert's Holiday Video Gift Guide. On this segment, we're going to be looking at some tapes that might make nice Christmas presents for kids. But first, here is a device that might make a present for parents who have both kids and cable television. This is an intelligent television with a tuner here that allows the TV to do lots of things. If you're worried that the kids might tune into the wrong channel, you want to supervise what channels are available to them, JVC has introduced televisions that won't let your children turn those channels on at all. Now let's experiment with Gene. Now Gene, let's say that you're a film critic and so that the show that you hate the most is the Siskel and Ebert program because you think that those two guys are so smart that it just makes you seem like you're not even necessary. Now here we look at the television set here and if we go to channel three, we've pro oh my God, there is Gene Siskel, such an intelligent critic that we've got to get rid of him. So we go here to, uh, <laughs> here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna set the channel guard here. It says set, and I wanna set number one. Okay, now that's it. And so now you see, if you're going through, there's channel two, and then the next one is channel five, you see. It won't stop at channel three. So then if I punch in channel three, I have to know the secret ID number yeah. in order to watch it. Well, I happen to know that my secret ID number is 007, so I push that, and then hey, I can see that clever God. fellow, Mr. Siskel, there. So that this is a way that, that if you're a little, at least a little more clever than I am, and you can figure it out, it's a way to keep your kids from watching certain channels. I think actually it works quite easily. The, uh, <laughs> the other thing that they have on Easy here... Easy for you to say. Of course, I didn't try it. The, uh, the other thing that they have on here is a, they call it the home sitter option, yeah. which allows you to knock out the use of the television set for a prescribed number of hours. Mm. Yeah, so that you can block out times of day and specific channels from the kids. And there you can even put on a, all clocks and other... An alarm of, clock and everything. Boy, yeah. I could probably program this to do almost nothing, given my skills. Yeah, okay. Now for younger kids, my field-tested report on videos for little children. In years past, I've recommended the Baby Songs tapes, and the Disney sing-alongs, and those recommendations really still stand. A lot of people, however, this year are going to be considering buying Bambi. And this is one film that little kids might feel a lot more comfortable with seeing at home. For example, during the forest fire. Seeing a sequence like that at home can be all right because you have a chance to talk with your kids, see their reaction, and monitor it more closely than in the theater. The Cat in the Hat books by Dr. Seuss are popular, and they work on video as well. Do you know where I found him? You know where he was? He was eating a cake in the tub. Yes, he was. One word of warning, I just hope that these tapes aren't used instead of the books. That would be a crime. Now, for somewhat older children, the most inventive Pee Wee's Playhouse Saturday morning TV show has released its programs on tape. Cowboy Curtis? Well, that there's a hand car, Pee-wee. And the Pee-wee's Playhouse tapes really stand up to repeated viewing because he puts so much into each frame, so much is going on that you won't catch it all on just one screening. I can also report that my three-year-old daughter enjoyed chewing on the attractive box while watching the tape. You know, you said something that really struck home for me, and that is a lot of people do use, a lot of parents do use video cassettes as babysitters. Absolutely. Stick the kid in front of the set, tell him to shut up and watch the movie for hours on end. And that's a shame because kids can also be looking at picture books or playing with things and learning to do things with their hands and their minds and their eyes. So I think really along with the Kitty TV cassettes ought to come this little gadget the to help blocker. turn off the TV once in a while so the kids can do something else and just sit there and become junior couch potatoes. I uh, just participated in a conference at the American Pediatric Association where we were talking about the influence of television and movies on children and more than one doctor recommended flat out take out the television set, mm -hmm. just simply remove it. It's very difficult, it's so difficult to control what's coming across on TV. They were saying that the best solution is just to get rid of it. 
Okay, another popular gift video area is music on video. And I have a couple of suggestions in this category. First of all, in this 20th anniversary year after the legendary rock concert at Woodstock, Michael Wadley's great documentary of that event is finally available on video in a form approximating his original widescreen and split-screen approach. He often put two or three pictures side-by-side side on the screen, and at last, on the new Woodstock tapes and laser discs, you can see all of them. There's a wide range of music available on tapes and discs, and of course, discs are the best for sound fidelity, but tapes are fun too, especially a tape like the brand new The Ladies Sing the Blues. This puts together a lot of historical footage, including this late footage of Billie Holiday at work. He's the lowest man that I've ever seen. Now, of the music videos that I screened, I most enjoyed the tape of The Who's 1982 concert, The Who Rocks America. Here they perform Who Are You in Toronto. I really want to know. As a big Motown fan, I also heartily endorse the 1965 appearance of most of the Motown greats on the English pop music TV program, Ready, Steady, Go. Here, performing live, is Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, backed up by Stevie Wonder on harmonica and the Supremes, Dancing Up a Storm. I really got a kick out of seeing Diana Ross just as a backup performer to the Miracles. She seems so much more relaxed there than lately. Coming up next, we'll take you to the scene of the latest sing-along video craze, a Japanese phenomenon now in America called the karaoke bar. <laughs> Continuing our holiday video gift guide, a home video idea that comes from Japan, where the karaoke bar is a place where people gather to sing along with laser discs of background music and pop songs, and the words are printed right on the screen. We'll show you the home video version in just a second, but here's an American version of the karaoke club that we found at the Excalibur Club in Chicago. No. It's amazing what people will do sometimes in public, and a lot of people are beginning to do this. Karaoke systems are quickly becoming popular in American clubs. What happens is that instead of spinning a record, a DJ in the club spins laser discs, which contain background music of pop songs, as well as a video printout of the song's lyrics. You just add your voice while watching the words go by. What does the karaoke system do for your singing ability? Well, let's say you sound like this. You are so beautiful to me, can't you see? Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tangerine. Calling out around the world, are you ready for a brand new beat? big kick in using the karaoke system seems to be the actual performance in front of strangers and friends. Uh, what's the fun for you? Is it doing it or would you like to see it played back? I'm um, doing it. I think when it's played back, I, I get a little embarrassed. Now, what's the kick for you, on stage or watching the video playback? I love being on stage. I really do. I enjoy it a lot. 
And what what's the big high? I mean, uh... the high is the audience reaction. I love it when people clap or they say you're the one that was on stage. It's a nice feeling. Now, which is the kick? Singing live in front of the crowd or watching it played back on the tape? I think getting on stage is the kick. You get on stage and you have words in front of you and you've got the backup. You're a star. You're a star. You That's the report from the bar, and here we have the home video version, which is basically an overgrown laser disc player. Yeah, this is a combi laser disc player that plays all four versions of laser disc: the three-inch single, the five-inch basic audio CD, the eight-inch disc like this, which is what the karaoke comes on, which is video and audio, and then the 12-inch regular laser disc movies. Then you go out and you buy these microphones, and uh, you put in one of these discs. You hook it up to your stereo system. You look at the screen. You see the lyrics underneath, and you start singing right along with it. If okay. you want to, you can try that. There's a button here for a little sharper, and another one for a little flat. Yeah. Well, this is the look of love we're looking at. One of the things that interests me uh, is how stupid some of the visuals are. Uh, these are pretty bad actors. Uh, I can hardly pretty bad visual to quality hold too. you. Feel my arms around you. How long I have waited. Now, what the, were you pushing flat then? Yeah, in, in my throat. I think you ought to push yeah. sharp. The, uh, the thing that interests me is I would probably, if I were using this at home, what I would do is sing a parody about the, the stupid visuals they'd given me. Like, look at the on your face, that's a good the, one. Look at the lip gloss on your face. Yeah, uh -huh. well, you, you're such a quick... I can't, I, I can't, the time can't erase, but I'll have to return this tuxedo, that kind of thing. I mean... Oh, that would be hilarious, Gene. Yeah. I think, actually, we had a videotape of you doing that. We could probably sell it to home video more fans important, all over the country. More importantly, uh, would you spend, it's an extra 200 bucks for this version of the laser display. Plus this stuff. Plus this stuff, I can I'll imagine it'll what, probably I, double it. If I had any connection with a grade school class or a Sunday school class or an old folks home or a family reunion or a bar or something like that, then this would be fun because I think it's fun to do in public. Would I have it at home so that I could sing to myself? I doubt it very much. Okay, well if you want to hear Roger sing to us at least, and he sings wildly off key, we'll take a look at that coming up next. Siskel and Ebert's holiday gift special has been brought to you in part by Coda Gold Film. Show your true colors. And now live, the pride of Urbana, Illinois, Roger Ebert singing California Dream, and he's both the mamas and the papas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, these are brown, and the sky is gray. Something reminds me of Cass Elliott, but not the voice. I've been for a walk. No cheap shots. I'm trying to do something here. On a winter's day. <laughs> is singing what you're trying to do? I'd be safe and warm. What a man try. I would not interrupt you while you were singing. Go ahead. Let's see if that's see how possible. Well you can do. California dreaming. That's terrible. <laughs> On such a winter's day, stopped into a church. And as Gene continues to Absolutely. destroy the concept of this song and indeed popular singing in general, that's it for this year's Cisco and Ebert holiday video. And I tonight. pretend to pray. And thanks for watching. Season screenings, everyone. You know the preacher likes the cold. He knows, he knows I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stay. stay. California dreaming on such a winter's day. This Codafone Model 5890 answering system forwards your messages from Codafone, a pioneer in telecommunications for over 30 years. Johnny Cat is America's number one premium cat litter. And now with our new drawstring litter box liners, Johnny Cat and a little privacy is all any cat needs. Your Life Daily Vitamin Packs, each one a total daily vitamin system, specially formulated for a variety of lifestyles. This Christmas, give the 1990 edition of Roger Ebert's Movie Home Companion with a special section on black and white movies. California dreaming. Come on in. On, on such a winter's day. day. Not all the video is bad. There aren't any more lyrics. Wait a minute. This Maybe it's not so oh. bad that there aren't any more lyrics. No, no, wait. Here's where we go like this. You know, where you're like, you pretend oh, wait, like you're a real like hep, hep cat. But, you know, what's the use of a karaoke system that has instrumental bridges where while you don't she's to sing? While she's swimming, who wants to sing? 
first of all. You know, the quality of this video is not too high. No, not very good. All, all the leaves, leaves are brown, and the sky is gray. I've been for a walk on a winter's day. I've been for a walk on a... Oh, I... On a... <laughs> Day. I push the button that makes it repeat. You know, you I'm can't sorry. tell when I'm clearing my throat. Like, yeah. so bad. I if I didn't tell her, I, I could, could leave, leave today. today. Holy smokes. <laughs> California, California dream. dream. <laughs> on such a winter's day. On such a winter's day. On such a winter's day. <laughs> just stare soulfully off into the distance. And then you kind of look off like this, right? And then they applaud, and you say, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Siskel and Ebert have left the building. Siskel and Ebert have left, left the auditorium. The auditorium. <laughs>